Hello, hello, and welcome to my uh, my thought on Sunday, but today is Monday, and today is Shavuos. Uh, I didn't even know that such a holiday existed, and today I celebrated Shavuos, and Shavuos is about the joy that the Jews feel because they're given laws that tell them what to do and how to feel. So this is going to be a potpourri of a lot of thoughts that I've got um, about Shavuos, about coming out of the lockdown, and about people's crazy ideas about food. And that's all it's going to be. So stick with me if you want to just hear, have a crazy conversation with Lynn Ruth Miller. I want to remind you that I have a book, and this is Getting the Last Laugh. And if you haven't gotten it already, please get it. It'll inspire you. It'll tell you that whatever you want to do, you can do it. And I have a new book, and it's called Ridiculously Old and Getting Better. I don't have a, a copy of it, although I should have. But by next week, I, they've sent it to me. I just haven't gotten it. But by next week, I will have it, and I'll show you. It's got a wonderful cover. You will love the cover. And this is an inspirational book. I wrote it eight years ago, and it's the first book that I got with a publisher. And I think that it is instructive for all you people that want to publish uh, your own books, that when I published my own books, I had absolutely no problem in having a book and in making money from the books. Now I have this absolutely lovely, lovely book. It's called Ridiculously Old and Getting Better on Amazon and many other, uh, many other uh, websites, uh, just all over, because, it's, because I have a real publisher. But I have no copies of the book, and when I get the book, I will not receive any any money at all when you buy it. But that's all right, because I want you to read it, and because the people who published it are absolute dolls and deserve every cent they can get. So there you have the two books. And now a little bit about Shavuos. I had no idea. So in Shavuos, what they do is they... Um, they celebrate Shavuos by having dessert first, <laughs> and they eat something sweet uh, to remind them that Moses has, uh, the Jews, has given them laws, and so they know how to live because they have parameters, parameters that they can follow, and they know uh, how to please God. So they eat cheesecake and milk products, but then, because they also eat a meal, they wait an hour until their bodies are cleansed of milk because Jews do not combine milk and meat. And then they have um, dinner. And that's what I did today. And it was, um, it was lovely because I think that this is a conversation about those of us who are atheists. I'm an atheist. I don't believe, uh, I'm not spiritual uh, at all. I believe in what I see. I believe in living in the now. And I do not believe that there is a God that's watching over me or taking care of me or doing nice things for me because the world that I see is not a nice world. As a matter of fact, I find it highly abusive to vulnerable people. But I am Jewish. And I was speaking to a man today who is from Ireland, and he said, it's much like being Catholic. I said, no, I don't think it's much like being Catholic, but it is much like being Irish. You're Irish. You can be anywhere in the world. You can do anything you want. You're Irish. I can be anywhere in the world. I can do anything I want, but I'm Jewish. And these are the ways that I know that I'm Jewish. If you come to my house, I will immediately say to you, stay for dinner. Then I will turn to whoever it is in the house with me and I will say, I don't have a thing in the refrigerator. And then I will go into the, and, and the people will say, oh, well, we can't just stay for dinner. You didn't expect us. And I'll say, no, no, stay for dinner. Because it is incumbent upon me, because I'm Jewish, to feed the people that come to my house. So then I will go to the refrigerator and I will pull out enough food to feed an army that I didn't know was in there. And I will make, oh, I will make roast chicken and I will, oh, I'll have a, a soup first. There's no Jewish human being that doesn't have soup somewhere in the freezer. 
and then I will give them a chicken dinner because I always have a little extra chicken in the freezer and I, there are a few vegetables lying around that I can do something with not to count the frozen ones I had just in case and then I will give them a lovely dessert that I will whip up very quickly uh, probably um, some ice cream that was sitting in the freezer anyway and I will be able to feed uh, this is with nothing in the house I will be able to feed minimum of eight people uh, too much food and then when I cart all the dishes off the table and clear the table after my guests are sitting there bilious and barely able to move, I will turn to that same person that I said, I don't have a thing, and I will say, nobody ate anything. That's Jewish. And Patty, the Irishman, was saying that when you come to a, a he said, when the reason that biscuits were invented was because when you came to an Irish household, particularly one where they were not very affluent and they didn't have a lot of money, they would always, always have a biscuit to give you because that showed that you were welcome in their, in their homes. So I guess when you're Irish, you're Irish, and when you're Jewish, you're Jewish. And the other uh, reason that I know that I'm Jewish is I cannot walk down the street and see a child without going absolutely mad for the child because we love children. And I, can, I know I am Jewish because the most important thing to me when I meet you is what you've read and what you're thinking. It's not like that for everyone else. But Shavuos was an interesting thing because it taught me that I also have roots. And what the woman who invited me, she's lovely, what she said to me is, it's important to know that you come from a tradition. I'm not convinced about that, but that uh, is my, those are my thoughts. But when we were there, we were, she's also a psychologist, and we were talking about the difficulties that people are having now coming out of lockdown. And I want you to think about this because I think it's terribly important uh, for you who have elderly relatives, who have elderly friends, to realize that elderly people, as opposed to those of you under 70, have literally been locked in their homes for a year and a half. I have gotten daily letters from the NHS telling me I am vulnerable, stay home. So I have not had a lot of problems because many comedians came over to me. So I, and I do a lot of Zoom calls. So I have had a lot of inter interconnection. But many of the people have not. Many of the older people, the people in my building, I have not seen them come out of their rooms. Uh, there's a woman that I correspond with, that I correspond with in Florida, and she has been locked in her room. They bring her, they bring her um, food. And the only connection she has is she happens to be computer savvy. But an awful lot of the elderly are not. And they are now able to leave. And would you believe, because they've been out of the habit, they're afraid to go anywhere. And I know the feeling because I have just emerged and I've had to go several places this past week that involve quite a bit of complicated travel. And it's confused me. It's, it's put me off. Whereas before lockdown, I thought nothing of it. Because right before lockdown, I went to New, I went to, to Glasgow. I came home. I had a week, and then I went to Newcastle. Then I came home, and then I did a series of shows. I did a show at um, the Vault, and then I did a show at Angel Comedy, and then I came home, and someone was cooking dinner for me, a man named Peter Dunbar, which was absolutely lovely. And then I went out, and I... I went and I did my shopping, and then, I, and then I, I was told that I can't go out anymore, and I stayed in. And then my darling friend Rob Mayhew came and gave me hugs every Friday. And that was, uh, that saved me. But there are people that have not been able to do that. And the woman that I was with today was saying that we've got to get them back into the swing of things slowly. Because the most important thing that you have is your connection with others. And just calling grandma or saying that grandma uh, on Zoom, looking at her on Zoom, if she can do it, is not enough. You need the smell and the taste and the feel of another human being. 
and you do it. So I'm telling all of you that if you have older friends, uh, you don't do it for me because I've already taken care of myself. If you have older friends, please reach out to them because they are readjusting to coming out and they are afraid. They are afraid. Um, I had a man over um, this Saturday who was in a march that people do not publicize, but there are marches going on uh, protesting the lockdown. And he was in that march. And when he came, he told me how he thought that the pandemic was a farce, and he told me that the vaccine was going to kill me. I have had both vaccines. And he told me that it was a plot. And when he left, I thought, what do you believe? And, and what do you think? And this is going around to everyone, including and the people that are most vulnerable are the elderly. So I'm asking you, because I'm elderly, for you to reach out to the elderly and, um, and help them transition into a more sane world where we love people and we trust them and we, we love them. The other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, how um, it is hard to realize, because I've been talking also to a lovely friend last night, whose name is Debbie Bridge, about um, finding love at my age. And I always love when someone says to me, well, just go on a dating site. Well, when I went on uh, Guardian Soulmates, because I did, oh, I've done a, first thing I did was I went on Craigslist because I wanted to find someone to uh, dance with. And I went on Craigslist and I put down that I am at that time 76, a long time ago. And I said, I would like to find someone to dance with. Now I am from the 30s and 40s and to my utter shock, dancing to young people these days, to middle-aged people, and even to old people, isn't what I thought it was. It isn't the foxtrot, it isn't the waltz, and it isn't the tango. And I got some of the most graphic offers that I have had in many years, and all of you who know me know that I refuse them all. <laughs> and I said to them, no, I really want to dance. All right, when I came to England, I tried Guardian Soulmates. And I thought, well, it's important. After all, older people can fall in love. Older people can have relationships. It's never too late, everyone is telling me. So I put down, I'm 80, at that time I was 85. I put down, I'm 85. I'd like to find somebody who's intelligent. That, by the way, is a laugh for all you women. That is a joke. I would like to find someone who's intelligent, who likes to dance. That really is a myth. Uh, I would like to find that. I am 86, and I got nothing. And I thought, well, I put up a pretty cute picture. Hmm, that's funny. So my friend Andrea, who's a smart, smart lady, said to me, well, you can't tell them you're 86. So I said, what should I tell them? She said, try 70. So I put down 70. I said I was 70. I wanted to find someone who was intelligent. I wanted to find someone who could dance. This is still a myth. I wanted to find someone uh, who had uh, a zest for life. This is a total fantasy. I want to do all that. Um, I'm 70. That's 16 years younger than what I am. Nobody answered. So I called, um, so, uh, so I looked online and somebody told me how to, uh, how to eliminate the people by people who, really, who wanted to dance. And I found four or five people, all of whom were 70. And I wrote them. And I got three responses. And each one of those responses was the same age I was, 85, 86. So evidently, when you go on a dating site, nobody believes that if you're over 70, you have a chance in hell of having someone hold your hand or give you a cuddle. And that, because you don't realize how, uh, I certainly didn't realize how very innocent um, I am. And that brings me to the story to, so that I can amuse you a little before I end this, of when I was a matchmaker. Now, many of you know this story, and if you know this story, then just turn this thing off and say, off, oh, you've heard this already. But I uh, was, without knowing it, I was uh, selling sex um, in Redwood City 
1980, 81, and 82. At that time, we didn't have the internet, and when you wanted to find a partner, uh, if you couldn't find them uh, in a bar or uh, at a dance, uh, you looked in magazines, in ads. And I have called this dating serv uh, service Playmates, but that was not the name of it. Um, but I wrote about it in a book, and I named it Playmates, and I have now forgotten what it was. But anyways, I was working for a woman who said she used to be a madam in a house of prostitution. She said, so I really know the business. No idea. So I said, well, yeah, but what is this? She said, well, it's dating. It's a dating service, and it's a very special dating service because it's free to the women, and the men have to pay 50 bucks, $50 in 1980. That would be about $500 now. So I thought, oh, that's really nice because a lot of older people, older women don't have a lot of money. This is projection. This is saying this older woman doesn't have a lot of money. A lot of older women are fine. That's what I thought. So I really went at this with a vengeance. I had a little card file, and I would say to the people, okay, you had to, you had to ask their measurements because though it is not woke at all, you had to know what race they were what they looked like, what their weight was, and you had to do all those things. And I was just so totally innocent. I truly, truly thought I was fixing up people to get married. And so I said to JoJo, that was my boss, I said, have you had many weddings? And she, she said, well, we didn't get that far. So I started fixing up these people. And the ones that really stand out in my mind is the guy that called up and said, I love women. I love all women. And anyone that's tried to be a matchmaker knows that you have a little trouble with the older women. You have a little trouble with the women that are a bit overweight. You have a little trouble uh, with the women that have not been out in the world very much, aren't very sophisticated. You got a little problem with that. So I thought, ah, oh, that's great. And he said, yes, I like all women. Any size, any, any, any age. And I thought, hmm, I'm going to be able to get all my difficult problems, a date, and they will be so happy. So I did. I tried to set, to set him up, and I said, oh, I have a lot of women for you. He said, well, there's one problem. Now, remember, I do not know that I am selling sex, but he knew, and the women knew. They all knew. I don't know how they knew. It was not on the, dis the description. I didn't know. I thought I was fixing them up. They were going to meet, have a nice little cup of coffee. At that time, I did not drink. I thought they would have a nice little cup of coffee. They would get to know each other. And maybe something lovely would happen. So I said to him, well, I'll, I've got a lot of women for you. And he said, well, there's one problem. He said, I live in a nudist colony. So I'm thinking, well, why is that a problem? So, I mean, you know, he's not going to go out into the world naked because you don't do that. So why is that a problem? I said, well, why do you have to bring her home? Oh, he said, you can't come in unless you're naked. So I said, well, I don't know whether I can get somebody to, to, to take off all their clothes on a first date. You know, they've got stretch marks. They're drooping a little. They have creepy skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, I said, why do you have to take her home? He said, well, knowing he was going to take her home because he was going to sleep with her. And I mean, not knowing it. He said, well, I would like to give her a cup of coffee, make her a cup of coffee. I said, oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. Um... I said, well, I'll see what I can do. Well, I called up all these women, and not one of them were willing to go home with him for a cup of coffee, even though they knew what it was. But the idea was they didn't want to take their clothes off before they got into bed. So I couldn't find him anyone. So finally, I did fix him up, and I'm looking and seeing that I have made this go long enough, so you will know this happy ending. I fixed him up by insisting that on his first date, he take this woman to a bowling alley. Because I figured he's going to keep his pants on for the bowling alley. The visual of a man without pants bowling at a bowling alley was too graphic for me. And he's not going to make her take off her clothes until later. And she probably will then be able to get in her car and go home. And it worked. And um, he paid his 50 bucks to us. And she went out with him. But he called me back and said I couldn't get a second date. Now I wonder why. So the other thing I want to talk about is people's ignorance with food. Did you know that the majority of the population, or a great percentage of the population, think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows? 
Would you believe that? Chocolate milk comes from brown cows. I love that. That's our laugh for the day. And our other laugh is to tell you how very innocent I am. I am so innocent that I have not, I never saw, I have never seen a naked man, a real naked man. The only naked men that I've ever seen were statues in the Toledo Art Museum. Those are the only ones I ever saw. And so I always thought that men's genitalia were shaped like a fig leaf. And I never could figure out how you could get that into a vagina. It took a marriage for me to figure that one out. And all of you who are as innocent as I am, trust me, that isn't the way it's shaped. And thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I started out very seriously and I ended up with a lot of nonsense. Reminding you again, two books, both on Amazon, Getting the Last Laugh, and Ridiculously Old and Getting Better. Thank you so much for joining me on my thought on a Monday that was supposed to be Sunday. <laughs>